The name Ghana was derived from the medieval Mali Empire, which was also known as the Ghana Empire of West Africa. Ghana was the title of the king who ruled the kingdom, which was then controlled by Sundiata Keita, founder of the Mali Empire in 1240 AD. The Portuguese were the first white merchants to arrive in Gold Coast in the 15th century to trade mainly in gold, diamonds, ivory, just to name a few, and most importantly, slaves. In 1842, a year after their arrival, they built the first castle in Gold Coast called the Elmina Castle, which was also known as Sao George Damina, and a second one also known as Fort St. Anthony at Azim, a small fishing town in the western region. The Dutch joined them in 1598 for the same result. They also built forts at Comenda and Comancy, all in the central region. By 1637, the Dutch had enough power to stop the Portuguese from monopolizing business by overthrowing them and taking possession of their two castles. Other Europeans who joined this wheels of fortune in the Gold Coast were the British, Danes, and the Swedes. The Danes built one of the most important castles, the Otto Christian Borg Castle in Accra, in 1651, which is now the Flagstaff House, where the President of Ghana lives. The Swedes also built the Cape Coast Castle, which was used as a slave depot to store slaves awaiting to be loaded into the next available ship to Europe. This castle was taken over by the British in 1665. The competition for gold, ivory and slaves was so intense that the Gold Coast had the highest concentration of European military warfare outside Europe. Due to this fact, out of the 110 forts and castles built in West Africa, hundreds of them can be found on the coastal areas of Ghana. The British took over the southern part when the Dutch withdrew in 1874. The Ashanti Empire was the strongest at that time, controlling the northern sector of the country. They grew more powerful as they progressed and conquered other tribes on their way south. This became a big concern for the British because they feared the Ashantis would control and monopolize trade if they conquered the southern part, especially the Fantis. In 1806, the Ashantis attacked the Fantis who were backed by the British and defeated them. This was the beginning of a lengthy series of wars to come. As the Ashanti Kingdom progresses toward the coastal areas, all in the interest of minimizing the power of the British. In 1821, the British took control of the coastal parts of Gold Coast. This happened when the Fanti chief repaid their debt for British alliance by signing a legal document, which eventually paved the way to colonial rule by the British. They named this area Cape Coast, which was formerly known as Cardo Corso and made it the capital of Gold Coast until 1877, 
when it was changed to Accra. The British built some churches like the Methodist Church and they also built the first English school, Wesley Boys High School, in 1876, which is now known as Infancipin. By 1902, the British had gained full power of Gold Coast by defeating the Ashantis with the help of the Fantis, the guns and all the enemies of the Ashanti Empire. The first political party was formed in August 1947 by Dr. J.B. Dankwa. George Grant, Akufu Ado, William Ofori Atta, Obiche Bilamte, and Akwenje. It was named the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. Its slogan was self-government within the shortest possible time. The UGCC therefore invited Dr. Kwame Nkrumah home from his studies to become the full-time general secretary of the party. Nkoma was imprisoned by the British for inciting people to revolt against the British, but returned in 1948 and formed the more radical convention People's Party, CPP. In 1951, he was again imprisoned for inciting strikes. Later in the year, elections were held for a larger and newer legislative council with Africans in the majority. The Convention People's Party won and Nkoma was released. He negotiated a new constitution with the British and in 1954, he became Prime Minister. Independence was now on the cards and there was a sense of excitement abroad. Three years later, on 5th March 1957, he led his country to independence. This was the day Ghana became the first sub-Saharan country in colonial Africa to be liberated from the white. A special marching parade is organized to remember all those who fought for Ghana's freedom. It is an important day in the history of Ghana and Africa as a whole. Freedom. Ghana. Land of freedom. On the first day of July, 1960, Ghana changed from the parliamentary system, which is the prime minister system, to a republican form of constitution. Kwame Nkrumah then became the first president of the Republic of Ghana. Star of Ghana, freedom, Nkrumah, star of Ghana, everybody toils of the brave and the sweat of their labors. Toils of the brave which have brought results. 